But in case you guys don't know, shame on you, this is, of course, Jenny Lewis. Uh, solo artist, one-time child actor, one-time member of Rilo Kyla. You still perform some Rilo Kyla stuff on stage, don't you? I read something recently you, when you were opening for Ray LaMontagne. Yes, you there are a couple tunes that I've resurrected from the R.K. graveyard. <laughs> you know what's funny, actually? Because when we were walking here, uh, we ran into some people that were coming to the festival and uh, ran into this one girl dressed all in red, big heart-shaped sunglasses. And she said, uh, I'm like, who are you most excited to see? And she almost burst into tears just talking about the fact that she was going to see you today. She was like, she was like, I'm going to see Jenny Lewis. And she's just so amazing. It's just so wonderful. It's just so like, and it's so cool, especially considering that, like some of the tracks off of your new album, The Voyager, out uh, July 29, by the way. You should go and uh, listen to it multiple times when it comes out. Having listened to the album, some of the tracks a couple times, and then having read up on, on some of the stuff that you've said about The Voyager and how this had a bit more of a personal feel to it. Um, everything between like you know dealing with bouts of insomnia to, to what was going on with your with your father um, it's so cool though that people can still look at you as an uplifting and inspiring artist even though there are times that you are dealing with somber and darker themes and tones well I think you write about or at least I can't speak to what other people write about but I write about you know my observations and people that I know and how I feel and hopefully people will stick around for the whole journey yeah the fun stuff absolutely you know and the deep shit i would like to write more positive songs in my life it's a goal that i've set for myself because mm. if you think about any bob marley song or any beatles song yeah. it's always about love right which is such an important thing to absolutely. sing about not like suicide and murder and like all the other various topics that i choose to <laughs> sing about in my <laughs> uplifting tunes <laughs> i don't know what's the matter with me but do you well then but then do you think like you have to live positive experiences to write positive songs or do you think you could just tap into something and just go from there that's a great question. I mean, I think life comes first. Of course. You know, you don't want to torture yourself, you know, for your work. Setting out to be positive in your own life and in your songs is something you have to set out to do, right? Absolutely. You want to be happy, ultimately. Sure. Like yeah, Pharrell. We, are, are you a fan of Pharrell's hat? Um, I am. I, I think it's... It's a nice hat. It, it's a, it's not quite a ten gallon no, hat. It it's more like a three and a half gallon hat. Is it? I think so. Have you, like, have you measured this out? Well, I've I met a man once with a ten gallon hat. How big is a ten gallon hat? <laughs> Pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, what is it? Your first solo album in six years, partially produced by 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 one Beck Hansen. Yes, who's here today? Who's here? Who's here? Are you gonna jump on stage with him? He Please say yes. Well, he hasn't asked me to. He shouldn't be asked. Like, I mean, like, he produced your record. The least he could do now is at least have you come up with him and just, like, perform something. Anyway. Look, when you're dealing with your heroes, I mean, I get, I the mean, last thing you want to do is get up on stage with them. <laughs> I'm serious. It's the last thing. You don't want to ruin the show. Has that ever happened to you, though? Like, where, like, you, you just felt too nervous to get on stage with somebody you really admired? I'm a reluctant guest spotter. Okay. Just because I don't want to mess up the intention. Okay. So my friend... Connor, for example, is always like, come up and like shake a tambourine, and I'm like, Connor, I don't want to ruin your song, man. I'm such a fan of yours. Of course, of course. Um, but I'm always flattered when people ask. It is kind of cool though that you did collaborate with, uh, was it Dave Mustaine, for Christmas, Christmas, Christmas time. Yeah. How did that even come together? Well, Dave Mustaine is my spirit animal. <laughs> I knew it. Partially because we have the same haircut. <laughs> well, I'd been posting pictures on Instagram of Dave Mustaine, yeah. and I can't help but think the producers of the Jimmy Kimmel show saw that, but I don't think they did. I think it was a total coincidence. Right. And uh, when I met Dave, he said to me, wow, how's the cabaret business treating you? <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> Who does he think I am? And I didn't correct him because it's Dave Mustaine, right. and I love him and make a death but yeah I don't know who he thought I was so, like, like deep what, what is what is it what is a reply to that answer oh it's it, it I guess it's good I just kind of gave him a thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> would you want to ever cut a full Christmas album with Megadeth well I'm a Jew so so Christmas for me I enjoy Christmas yes. but it would have to have some Hanukkah themed okay. action in there and I can only think of one sort of new take on Hanukkah, or newish, and it was like that Adam Sandler song from like the 
late 80s. Hanukkah song. Yeah. Although I do, I do enjoy Christmas, and my outgoing message has been the same for over 10 years, which is, it's almost Christmas. <laughs> Ten years. So, Ten years strong. <laughs> come March, people are pissed. <laughs> They're like, you gotta change your message. Christmas is already over. But then, like September, they start getting the joke again. Right. Like it really is almost Christmas. Right, right. And you get people excited about it again. I do. I mean, the way I see it, though, I think if you wanted to use a model for a Christmas album, look no further than the Neil Diamond. The man cut like two or three Christmas records, mm. and they were all huge sellers. And I believe Neil Diamond was a Jewish man. Very much so. <laughs> Very much so. so you don't have to be, uh, you know, you can be a Jew and just, sell the it, Christmas. It just be for everybody, man. <laughs> Who said that Christmas has to be like one, you know, only for the Gentiles? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> also, I, I, I have to commend you for uh, the video for just one of the guys with uh, with Anne Hathaway, Kristen Stewart, Brie Larson. I mean, amazing video. You guys look all awesome in tracksuits as well, by the way. Thank well, you. well done, well done. Um, what'd you do? Just like call them up and just be like, hey, let's let's do this. Let's just do this video. Well, I've been wearing tracksuits for many years, uh, and so I thought I would just sort of, you know, in my own image, dress my my friends. Makes sense. Um, yeah, and they were so cool. Uh, Annie's one of my best friends, okay. and we had been working together on a movie. I wrote a bunch of original songs for a movie that she produced. Really? So we became really close, and she was totally game. Okay. She's one of the first people to hear my record when I finished it. Oh, and nice. So they were so cool, and I didn't ha even have to pay them. Do you, do you they did it for free. Really? So they just showed up. This was low budget, this is and my directorial debut. Oh, you directed it as well? I did. I did not know that. So they trusted me not only as a director, but as a costumer. Nice. Because I was like, okay, so you guys are going to wear tracksuits, and then you're going to go barefoot in like white tuxedos for the other, and they're like, all right. And we're just going to dance. And, and break dance and all that other stuff. They were pretty easy to direct. I, I figured they would be. I have so much respect for them as actors. Truly, like, they just... I gave them one or two takes, and they just knew exactly what to do. And Annie actually came up to me, and she, she said, you know, I, I have a serious question to ask you. Uh, I was like, what is it? She's like, is it cool if I wear a rat tail? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I feel my character is being inspired by. A rat-tailed breakdancer. That's why you got that Oscar, girl. <laughs> <laughs> How close do you, do you hold your friend's opinions when it comes to your music? Because you're saying she's one of the first people to listen to your album. Do you ever go to them for feedback and say, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Or are you very much of your own mind where you're like, I know what I want and this is how I want it done. I just want to know what your take on it is. Well, I, my friends always hear my records first. And if I'm stuck, you know, I'll play something for Ben Gibbard, for example. Okay. He's always like a great barometer. Okay. And I actually gave him my last record, Acid Tongue, and asked him to order it and I didn't go with his order and I should have really? yeah he's like open it with acetone the song right and I should have I really should have done that so I really I look to my friends for okay. guidance and help and and I know when something isn't great because I don't get the call <laughs> like I send it out it's like crickets wait what time is it I have to go play soon it's 5 30 right now 5 30 I should go meet up with the twins they're in my tour bus we have to run a couple tunes right. that's about that time but listen thank you so much for taking the time nice talking to you, like, nice talking to you as well absolutely guys Thanks. the voyager july 29th jenny lewis we've been hanging